It's 2025. Large language models like GPT-4 and Llama 3 can answer trivia, write essays, and even help with coding. But here's the thing. Our benchmarks aren't keeping up. Many data sets that once challenged AI models are now trivially easy and saturated. And even when models top the leaderboard where these data sets are used, they still struggle to match human performance when deployed in real-world scenarios. So how do we know if a benchmark is still useful? And how do we measure whether a question in a data set is truly adversarial, meaning that they are hard for models, but natural and easier for humans? The core problem is this. We lack a standardized metric to assess whether a data set remains adversarial as models evolve. That's exactly what this paper is about. It introduces ADB score, a new metric to quantify how adversarial a data set is, grounded in one simple idea. Humans should find the sample easy and clear, and models should find it hard. The idea of adversarial data sets is not new. They've been used in fields like computer vision for years. Think of the classic example. Here's a 3D printed model of a turtle that no human would call a rifle, but older ImageNet trained models consistently does. But adversarial examples in language are trickier. Language is made of discrete units, words, not pixels. So small tweaks can change the meaning entirely or not at all, depending on context. Thus, you can't add strategically chosen epsilons to turtle. In other words, an adversarial example in language means deliberately designing examples that are confusing for models, but still clear and natural for humans. So what makes a good adversarial data set in language? One of our central arguments is that you can't just look at raw accuracy. Let's take an example. What's the capital of Georgia? Humans get nearly 60% accuracy if the answer key says Atlanta, but computers get 20% accuracy. Does this mean it's adversarial? No, because it's a bad question. Tbilisi is also a reasonable answer that smart humans may answer. Whatever approach we use to measure adversarialness should account for problematic questions, whether from ambiguity or false presuppositions. To recap, a good adversarial example should meet three conditions. First, they should be hard for models, especially stronger ones. Second, they should be relatively easy for skilled humans. Third, they should be well-posed, clear, specific, and not ambiguous. However, there's a key ingredient missing in much of the prior work. Most data sets don't actually test against humans, and those that do test with humans don't use skilled humans. Instead, researchers often rely on crowd workers or their own intuition. That makes it hard to say if we're really making progress in benchmark construction methods, and if newer adversarial data sets are actually better. So we introduce ADB score to measure th these three components, building on item response theory IRT, a psychometric tool designed for standardized testing and increasingly used in NLP. ADB score uses three components from IRT to create a single number that says how adversarial questions are. One, margin. This is the difference between how well skilled humans do versus how well skilled models do. If humans do better than models, the question gets a boost. In such cases, ADB score increases. Two, ambiguity penalty. If expert humans disagree on the answer, that's a red flag. ADB score penalizes that kind of uncertainty because it means the question might be poorly posed. Since clarity is a key for evaluation, ADB score decreases when this is high. Three, Discriminability. This measures how effectively a question distinguishes between more and less knowledgeable participants. If a question rewards genuine understanding rather than luck, the ADV score increases. Then, we combine all the components in the ADV score. Now, where do we get each value of these components? IRT is a statistical model that resembles logistic regression. It models the probability of a correct response using a sigmoid function denoted by sigma in this equation. This is the 2PL framework of IRT. For every subject i and question j, IRT estimates the probability that i gets j correct based on the subject's latent skill and the question's difficulty and discriminability. 
In this chart, this dot represents the probability of the model in humans getting the answer correct to the same question. It then compares the skill with the difficulty of an item. If the skill is equal to the difficulty, the probability of getting the question correct is 0.5. Having a higher chance of subject J getting the example correct means that the subject has more skill. As skill increases, the probability approaches 1. This framework is used in the education field to model how likely a subject is to answer a question correctly based on their skill. In our case, the subjects are both humans and models. We use IRT to focus on the true skills of the humans and the models who answer the question. IRT lets us go beyond raw accuracy. For example, a question that 50% of the people get right might be still be very good. If skilled people always get it right and less skilled people don't, then this is the case. We want to make sure we are capturing real skill, not just random chance or lucky guesses. The steepness of the curve indicates the degree of discriminability. A perfectly discriminative question will have probability zero until the subject's skill surpasses the difficulty of the item. Now, we use the predicted probabilities and estimated skill parameters from the IRT model for each question to compute the ADV score. Since we have access to the full skill distribution of the subjects, we focus on the high-skilled subjects, excluding the probabilities and question parameters inferred from low-skilled subjects. For adversarial immersion, mu, we compare the predicted correctness probability for skilled humans versus skilled models. For ambiguity penalty, delta, we take mean deviation of correctness probability of skilled humans. If skilled humans have widely varying predicted probabilities of answering correctly, it means there is disagreement. For discrimination, kappa, we compute the total item information function, TIF, which measures how much the question tells us about a subject's skill. The more information it provides, the better it is at distinguishing between experts and novices. When we combine these, we get ADV score. Higher and positive scores mean the question is hard for models, clear for humans, and good at revealing skill differences. It's not just about tricking the model. It's about crafting adversarial questions that are fair and adhering to three conditions. Thus far, our adversarial score is an ideal, but we'd also like a dataset that captures this ideal. The problem is, you can't throw together an interface where we show the adversarial score to a user as they type in the answer, as this score requires human data. But professional trivia writers have a mental model of how humans answer questions. These trivia writers pick a Wikipedia article and are asked to write a question about it. They got real-time feedback from a QA model. If the model answered correctly, they were encouraged to revise the question. If they got it wrong, they could submit it for review. The authors needed to use their own intuition as trivia writers to know if humans would get it right. The interface also showed retrieval evidence and highlighted the exact tokens the model used to guess the answer so the authors could understand and exploit model behavior more precisely. Finally, the question we used in a large-scale human model competition where we collected multiple model and human answers. To evaluate ADB score, we applied it to four QA benchmarks. These were selected specifically because they include skilled human responses, which are essential for ADB score to work. The results? ADB QA had the highest ADB score value of 0.31. It had the strongest human model gap, high discriminability, and very little ambiguity among expert humans. The other datasets didn't do very well. TrickMe showed some adversarialness, but it was less informative overall. FM2 had low discrimination and minimal human model gap, resulting in a weak score. Bamboogle was anti-adversarial. Models outperformed humans, giving it a negative ADB score. This is the opposite of what we want in an adversarial benchmark. So out of the four, ADBQA topped the others. It challenged the models, made sense to humans, and separated skill levels effectively. This shows a comparison of difficulty parameters from IRT for humans and models. 
Each point represents a question, and where it lands tells us who find it hard or easy. On the top left, we have questions that were easy for humans but difficult for the model, like Timon and Pumbaa. Cultural references like this can fool models, but they're quite intuitive for humans. This is an example of an adversarial question, and our goal is to identify and collect as many of these as possible in our benchmark. On the other hand, the bottom right is where humans struggled, but machines didn't. For instance, this Ease Boost 350 question is difficult for most humans, but models which have been trained on web data probably got it with ease. These questions are anti-adversarial, likely to show similar patterns with the Bamboogle dataset. All datasets, particularly for evaluation, are moving targets. Models improve over time, and we can see this progress as datasets become less adversarial as new models are released. This plot shows adversarial score over years 2020 to 2024. TreatMe, released back in 2019, starts off with a high adversarial score since DPR is the only model in the set in 2020, and TrickMe focused on retrieval. But as stronger models are introduced, its score declines sharply, suggesting that the dataset no longer challenges newer systems. Bamboogle, introduced in 2022, also starts relatively high but quickly drops, and even goes negative. That means in recent years, models are outperforming humans, which completely defeats the purpose of an adversarial benchmark. We collected skilled human answers for this dataset. FM2, released in 2021, stays consistently low across all years, indicating it was never strongly adversarial or discriminative. In contrast, ADVQA, released in 2024, holds steady. It starts high and shows smallest drop in performance as models improve. This suggests it remains adversarial even for the most advanced systems. So overall, as models grow more capable, most benchmarks become less challenging. ADB score can help diagnose when an adversarial evaluation dataset is getting stale. So next time you're looking at a shiny new benchmark, ask yourself, is it a truly adversarial or outdated? Can you rely on this data to test your model? We think ADP score can help build da better datasets, not just for QA, but for tasks like translation, dialogue, and multimodal reasoning. Please talk to us if you want to try this out in a new domain. While ADP score relies on expert human input, it might be possible for models to estimate human difficulty, even if it cannot recreate human answers, making the authoring process less dependent on intuition. If we want models that really match human ability, we need benchmarks that evolve with them, and ADP score helps detect what actually is adversarial. We're going to hold another competition this year, similar to previous one, but this time it will focus on understanding the cooperative strength between humans and models rather than their competing abilities. Thanks so much for listening.